Okay, yeah, just enjoying myself a little um, pear cider here. Really good for um, the gout and everything. Amazing. I mean, you're not supposed to drink a lot of alcohol, but pear cider's got some magical properties. Who to thunk it? I think it's a good idea. I'm sticking with it. Anyhow, that's not what you're here for. You're here for that bloody Russian protected cruiser. <coughs> can't, even, can't even speak too much pear cider. <laughs> All right. The Vyag, yes, I know, you've all been patient, you're asking me every week. Look, I tend to start this about two weeks ago, but um, work keeps coming in on the phone, bastards. I mean, all I'll do is spend it on more model kits. <laughs> I really thought I'd have, you know, four weeks off break this year, but no, no, here it is, it's only, you know, less than a week before Christmas. Finally, I've got a day free. Anyhow, enough waffling. The, um, I've worked very hard on the Vyag today. And um, I'm really pleased with results. So let's go back to this morning. And um, I started, you know, around 8 o'clock. I'd already mowed the lawn and done a few other things. You have to hear. I was up at bloody 4 because it gets stinking hot by about 8. So I'd already done that, vacuumed the cat, done everything. And, um, yeah, bass the cat. <laughs> if you know about bass, you know there's no way you get a vacuum cleaner near here. Anyhow, uh, let's have a look at um, what I've done today on the bag because I actually managed to accomplish quite a lot. I love this kit. Half an hour into the build and step one is finished. I mean, only three parts or four parts. Really is those central pieces, terrific. Those little spaces, they gave this so much rigidity so that when you're trying to push the sides in, okay, uh, so when you're trying to push the sides in to get everything to, to fit, you have something to push against, it's terrific. Uh, no problem at all with the um, the centre line on the hull there. Uh, basically, just needed a light sand where the sprue sprue joins were. The um, the only tiny problem area, well, just we got to pay a bit of attention, was the stern here. This um, this required a bit of coaxing. It still does. It's still coming a bit apart there. It is um, a bit of spring there in that. I mean, what is the point of that little penis at the back there? Goodness me. No doubt it'll become apparent later. But that's the sort of thing, you know, that you um, you have as an add-on part because some prick will knock that off. It's usually me. Rudder's built in. Um, that's all right. That worked in well. This all went together fairly well. I, um, I'm still giving this a bit of a squeeze, but that's not a problem. I may get away with no filler at all, which is amazing. Bow was terrific. It went together perfectly. It only required my usual method of I put the slow setting glue in, the contactor, and I do that on the all the... Um, the little points, all the little slots and tabs and things, and then any area there's a big flat peak, I um, I put that in and get the thing basically to um, start tacking together. Then I go through with my um, my Tamiya Thin, and I very slowly do edges, with a little bit of Tamiya Thin, pressing, and then basically blowing on it, and at least in my, my weather, because well, I mean it's, it's uh, about 80 degrees here at the moment, um, and I've got the air conditioning on in here, which drops it down to low 70s, but um, that'll go... Whew, set straight away. So I just work my way around. You know, I do that with um, aircraft fuse large and everything I do, you know. Um, so the only one really, although that will probably, probably by the time I sand that, there'll be nothing there. So I'm, I'm hoping it'd be actually quite good to get this done with no filler. And um, oh, that's starting to, um, yeah, this part, the stern is about the only part here where there's a bit of spring in all this, although I sanded all the surfaces clean and um, I'll do that. Wasn't any point putting clamps on. I had my um, had my pegs and and, and you know, clampy things. It really wasn't any point. I found all I've really needed for this one is um, some of my uh, tape. This is just painter's tape that I use to save the good quality tamiya tape. Get some um, pressure up and um, use the tape to hold in place. And that's been working perfectly. So um, so far, stage one, absolutely a dream. No issues at all. There's no, no flash. <laughs> it was just, you know, sprue points to tidy up. Uh, I haven't, I never cut off completely the nubs when I glue together halves of things like fuselages and wings and, and hulls because um, I flatten them so that they'll go mate together, but I always leave them proud so that um, basically once it's all cemented, that becomes part of the sanding process. It's a perfect join. Now, what I'll need to do next is address where these. Um, these little support things here, which are fantastic, but they cause these dimples. So if I can get that in the light. You know, they cause these little dimples. So that will be filler. That will probably be the only filler I'm going to need on this hull. So so far as a very, very happy. 
money a few hours into the build and already this is looking pretty good. It almost looks like a uh, Carusa. Now those um, those little dimples have pretty well disappeared. That's um, filler. There's some little photos here to show you what I did. Uh, filler on and then just about 90% of the filler off and smoothing things up. They're, um, they're gone. You won't be able to see anything. So those, uh, those are gone. These little stabilizers are on. Um, I did very well with the ones on the port side. They seem to go on really nicely. I'm struggling with one on the uh, starboard side here, but I'll probably put a little bit of my um, my wing root filler in there that I use in the aircraft and just fill that tiny little gap. I don't know why it doesn't want to fit on that side. <laughs> but anyhow, who knows? That's, that's, a, that's a tiny little thing. Now, this deck just clicks in. It is incredible. And that's even a little bulkhead. This is none of this is glued. This is all dry fitted. Okay, only thing glued is the is the hull so far. So the uh, I managed to um, sand up and um, get very smooth the uh, the bow. So that's that's quite lovely. Tiny bit of filler there, as per pick I'm showing. Um, you know, just the tiniest bit of filler, but really probably got away got away with it. Didn't need to do it. Had to be careful around. There's a little filigree thing here and. Uh, little line there and you got to watch out the torpedo tube but you know, really good really easy you, you could have done that without filler the stern however I'm probably still working on uh, this stupid pointy thing I don't know what it does and I don't know why there's there's a gap there I'll have to sort of see if I need to do some more work there a bit more filling and under here there was the dreaded Zvezda oops dreaded Zvezda um, mismatch of sprues you know like I had in the BT-7 all the time but luckily that's sort of hidden underneath the um, the rudder there. So I'm still trying to work out how to sand that because once you've got the rudder in, you can't get a file in there. It's too sort of tight. So I'm kind of scratching away at that, seeing what I can do. Maybe I'll be able to get a bit of sandpaper in and um, drag it through. But uh, that's the least of my worries. It's, it's a spot that you're hardly ever going to really see anyway. So that's fine. Now the deck, with the rear deck here, the um, this piece kept falling into the hole all the time. So I just made up a little piece of evergreen sprue and... Um, cemented it underneath the um, the mid deck so that I could then place that on there. Now the fit is pretty bloody good, pretty bloody good indeed. The um, there's a bit of a gap there, right? But actually that once she's pinched, once she's pinched in the shape, that'll disappear. So um, because I've done such a good job of drawing the bottom of the hull together, the top of the hull here's got a little bit of springiness. So put a rubber band on that overnight. That'll be a perfect fit. The um, I'll put it there. The uh, the mid deck just clicks in. That's um, I might try and pull that part out and show you. That is incredible. It's like a Bandai part. It just clicks in. That's it. It's there. I wouldn't even have to submit that. I might go through and just make sure that there isn't anything I've missed on the um, the sprue joints because it's it's pretty stiff. But it seems to be spot on. And there's holes here that match up to ones underneath. They seem to line up. The um, the bow again, similarly a. Beautiful fit and a little bit of a rubber banding overnight to pinch it and it'll be perfect. That's all. It just seems a little bit gappy at the moment, but literally once you once you pinch that up, it's perfect. So that is all good and that is all fine. So um, there you go. There's those center things that have really done their job. Oh, that was the, um, we've lost that. <laughs> that was the little bulkhead that goes behind the foredeck. And that was just, again, dry fitted in there. Everything is fitting beautifully in this. The tolerances are terrific. I mean, this is nothing like any Zvezda kit I ever built. Um, this this is well done, well engineered. But then again, it's one of their most famous ships, so you'd think so. Now this part, as I said, is it's really clicked in. It's um, it's quite a mission to put in. I think it comes out easy. Yeah, it comes out fairly easy. Um, but it literally clicks into a little slot along there. So that's, I mean, there's a... Here's my little bodge job there of the um, the evergreen spray, which just gives me the extension. Now I thought of actually cementing that up, but because of the way this has to click in and that has to go on, I'm going to leave those separate to the absolute last minute. So all those bits are looking good. This has um, all come up fairly well. There's just a little bit of work to do here, which I can do later on. I just want to move on with a few things. I'm going to get the pin vise out and drill out the portholes. I'll probably do that later on as well. That's, um, that's a job we're sitting in front of the telly. You know, um, having my curry, drawing out some portholes. They won't take long. They won't take long at all. But I'll do them. I always like to draw out the portholes. You, you don't need to. Now, what I do need to look at at this point is if I put this deck on, I'm not going to be able to get inside the hull again. And this Pontos stand, this pedestal, uh, it requires a nut 
like me, a nut. It requires a nut on the inside cemented, so that's got to be CA glued in. So I need to figure out positions now of about where am I going to put my pedestals. And I, uh, I might do a little dry fit, do that in a sec. I might make, make them up without the, the nut, and then we'll see if we can uh, sort of what looks aesthetically pleasing. Those points there might be quite good, because I mean that's two arbitrary points. You never know. Or because of this little stabiliser thing, maybe one sort of either side of the stabiliser. Don't know, I'll, I'll fiddle around with that. But I need to make that decision before I go any further. Now also, I'll, um, what I want to do now is look at the wood deck. So I'm going to do a dry fit of the wood deck. I'll cut those pieces out. Uh, I've shown in detail in the, gra the grassway, in the Arizona, bloody Arizona. I've shown in detail in the Arizona how I cut out the uh, deck pieces and um, what we do there. So um, I'll just do that in a bit of speed it up motion. You can always go and watch the uh, Arizona video if you want more detail about dealing with these wood decks. This one's different to, um, I think we had artworks last time. Bit of PE, not too much PE in this. I've only got, um, the wood deck actually comes with the PE just to do the upper railings and it's got the ladders. That's it, not really hard. And then I've stolen that off my grass bay. That'll be my, um, my railing around the, um, the lower decks. Anyway, I'll get on with that now and we'll see if the uh, wood deck dry fits and then pick the position for the pedestals and if I can get all of that sort of sorted out. Oh no, there's one thing I'd nearly forgotten. Yes, there's a snag holding all of this back and that's where's instructions. Instructions around here somewhere. Instructions! Oh, that's me. Uh, so, so I'm barely moving along. I've been knocked out step one, step two. I won't put on the... Um, the, the, the screws and the um, propulsion um, pipes there, the screw pipes, whatever, um, because I will knock them off. I'll put them on as I go to paint, last thing that I'm going to do, so I never have to touch the bottom of the hull again. So they won't, they won't be done for a while. But the, um, the main guns, um, because they're kind of small, unlike battleship guns, you can leave them afterwards and just drop them in gravity. These uh, require little gluey things underneath to um, hold them in place. I don't know if we can actually friction fit them and pop them on. I'll have to look at that. But basically they're saying they even want you to um, pop it in and then use this melty technique. Oh, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> it's for those. <laughs> it actually says melt there. I want you to put it in and melt the thing. Yeah, not like that. I'd rather put a piece of sprue or something in there, like I'd make a little evergreen round piece and cement it in. I don't really want to be putting a hot screwdriver <laughs> onto my kit. I don't like that idea. Sorry, Zavista. Okay, so I need to um, investigate how those guns are going to go in and whether I could leave them until afterwards. Otherwise, I'm going to have to get the wood deck. I'm going to have to get the wood deck on, which is going to be tricky because the wood deck really, yeah, it's going to be a bit fiddly. I'm going to have to think that one through. Anyway, we'll come back to that in a sec. For now, I'll just do a dry fit of the wood deck, make sure that all the parts are going to fit, and then start making some decisions. the wood deck and it actually at that angle at least it doesn't look too bad it's only when you go side on you notice it's not even sitting properly there's a big lump and the reason for that is um, there's molded on stairs there which they've given you wood hunters given you the stairs to put in right and in fact, you've got no choice. <laughs> well, you have got a choice. You could um, leave the plastic stairs on, which means you're going to have to cut into this very lovely wood deck. You'll have to work out where those stairs are and cut a big bloody hole in it. It's a shame. It's lovely thin stuff. This is a lot thinner than an artwork's um, veneer. And that's with the backing on. This is paper thin, which is terrific considering the tolerances of this kit. So um, that's, that's really nice. So yeah, the um, as far as I can tell, I'm going to have to cut those stairs out. And that'll, um, that should allow that to sit on. And also here, there's a big bloody lump in the middle here. It's, it's fitted everywhere, but it won't fit there. So when you um, get in and peel that away gently, there's um, cotton rails there. <laughs> Whatever they are. 
Where else? Fire hoses. You know, something like that. I think they're fire hoses. Shouldn't know these bloody things. are building off ships. So that would be the reason they give you the reels here. So usually you fold those up, put a little bit of sprue in the middle of them. And um, that will be why Wood Hunter's giving you all these bits and pieces. Not out of the goodness of their heart. Well, don't know. Maybe they just decided, if you're going the wood deck, come on, get serious. You're going to put in some decent bloody stairs, aren't you? And you're going to put in some nice cotton reels. <laughs> so you don't get a choice. So yeah, so if you get the wood deck, you... Um, and you don't want to put all the uh, the PE on. You're going to have to cut into your deck to um, basically make spaces for all these things. And I personally, here, I'm going to cut into the deck because I don't see a problem with those. I'm not going to. I've done the cotton rail bloody um, things before, and they're a pain in the butt. And they always seem to fall and break in my fingers, and I can't be bothered. And I, honestly, I don't think they look any better. They really don't. So here, I um, I should be able to work that out. It's pretty easy. I should be able to just cut into the deck. In fact, they've even got two little squares there for those guides. But I should be able to measure that up. That should be a problem. Interestingly, at this point too, that deck is underneath. There's another fun little bit. There's the bulkhead, and the deck is actually underneath the bulkhead. Now, I don't know if I'm entirely happy with that, because that's obviously creating a space. That's obviously pushing things up. So, um, where's the bulkhead? It's a bit tricky. This Once you get it in, it's fine. There we go. It doesn't quite sit as you expect. So, and also it helps if you get it in straight. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's, um, this is fouling this piece as well, which is annoying. So there's, um, there's, there's compound thing. Oh, there we go. It's in there. So I'm just worried that that's lifted. I can already see. Oh, it's not too bad. I'll, I'll have a look. Thing is, at the moment, we've got the, um, the backing paper on. So, um, hard to tell. Whereas I could quite easily pencil trace a line there and cut that off but it is a nice clean cut I mean it probably would be easier to work out how thick this veneer is it's not much and just gently sand a bit off that bulkhead that's probably much easier and then all your fits and tolerances should be right because um, yeah that does does fit on there nicely and it's going to give a really lovely edge I prefer this um, the rendering of this wood deck, the artwork, because there's none of the big heavy cartoon lines. There's just the, um, the deck planks marked out. They're a little bit too uniform for me, but that's okay. I prefer the Pontos kit where I only had the bow to stern lines and I could actually go in with my blade, create all the other lines. But look, um, that's where that is. I'm going to need to do a bit of work. So, um, yes, not as bad as the Arizona though, but I am going to have to do a little bit of surgery to get my wood deck to fit. Now, it's often a case with these kits, if in doubt, read the bloody instructions. Now, um, on the flip side of this, um, the packaging, this instructions. <laughs> oh dear, I should have checked that. It doesn't matter. I was exuberant and excited to build this kit. But anyhow, um, it clearly indicates the things that need to be removed. So these little orange things, rather than tell, I mean, cut it away. And... Um, there's, there's quite a quite a lot of cutting they require. And another thing is, um, at the back here, I was worried about these two deck pieces because they um, I wanted to get them mate up. You don't have to because there's a little bulkhead here that goes in. There's tiny little part here, which I made up. So that goes in and actually fits in and covers that line. So there's no reason I couldn't actually make all of these off the ship and put the guns in and everything and then basically put it all in um, after, which is unusual. It's not the way I've done done things in the past. But, but that's um, that's another work try. Oh, another thing too, this um, this piece was wildly too big for this. And I thought this is really strange. And I trimmed a little bit off this side and that sort of fit a bit better. It's hanging over the edges. And I'm going, oh, this is all a bit weird. And then I looked and went, oh, hang on. There's all these raised ridges here. Check the instructions. There's nothing to tell me what goes on there. And then I thought... We've got all these bloody rails, haven't we? And again, no real clear indication. I mean, usual sort of oriental stuff. I'm thinking these rails are going on there. So I better not trim any of these upper pieces of wood deck. I mean, I'm only taking a tiny bit off the edge of that, which won't make much difference. Um, so I need to put on some rails on there so that my deck's going to fit. So that's something else. So there's, there's going to be a bit of... Um, sculpting on this one. I didn't think there'd be that much. It um, won't be as bad as the Arizona, but I, obviously there's there's quite a bit of um, um, the, the four four deck here area, 
um, there's a whole little faux castle or whatever you call it. It's got to go up and it will need pieces removed. And also I had to remove two tiny little pieces of the, um, the wood deck here and here, which is indicated there and there. Remove that. But I thought, what are we removing? There's no plastic. Which actually, the, um, the deck piece had to be cut out. Now, in my Pontos decks and my um, artwork decks, you had to cut out all these little bits. Right, but we've had the luxury with the, this one, this, this wood hunter deck, every little hole and everything was pre-cut for me. In fact, even the um, edges were cut to the point where there were just tiny little gates, wooden gates. And I, and I eventually realised I didn't have to keep scribing my line all the way, my knife all the way down the, um, the edge. I only had to go along and find those little wood gates, tap, 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 and the wood piece would fall out. So there's some, um, I really like there's these wood hunter decks. They're, um, they're different. They're um, a lot easier to use in that respect. Instructions, well, you've got to have your wits about you and be ready to do a bit of interpretation. So um, I'll work on with that. I think what I need to do now is take a break and um, I'll drill out my portholes. So there'll be something fun for me to do. And then I can um, work out where all these little bits cut off because I hadn't done a pre-prep for PE because really it was only rails. Well, they rails, you just put them on afterwards, no problems. But um, there's a little bit of cutting off and removing and I better double check that and make notes, which is what I normally do with every other kit. But I failed to look at this one. I just thought this was straightforward. Well, sort of is. No harm done. I, I'm learning as I'm going. But the, um, the Woodhunter deck is fitting really nicely and doesn't look good. Doesn't it look spiffy? So that's good. The, um, the little cotton reels, I cut out the pieces very carefully, like even under the size I thought they should be. Trial fit. They were a little bit too big. I even managed to basically make little cut lines while it was sitting in there, pressing against where the edges were. Took it out and then cut it all out cleanly. And they're fitting in nicely now. They're probably a bit tight, but tight is good. And if anything, tight just means I could take a little bit more off. Once you get to loose, then you've got problems. So that's all good. That's all good. Those stairs cut off nicely. No problems at all. Although they did expose a little gap underneath. You can't see it with that deck in there with its backing cover. But I'm still going to fill that. I'll, I'll even show you. Just to show my two fibs. Oh, you've got to be careful with these things. They are so thin. They're like paper. They really are. Um, you might be able to see in there. Don't know if you can. Can you see? Hey, there's a hole. See? There's a little hole. So I cut down. And um, of course, the moulding wasn't designed for that. The model was designed for a big, lumpy um, set of stairs. So a little bit of filling required there. It, it, Probably will get all covered up, and anyhow, you're going to have stairs at the top of it. But I'll um, I'll fill that and let that set tonight, so um, that'll that'll be done. So basically, that's where we'll leave this video because I think we've just about got to half an hour, and um, I have waffled on enough. I'm having a ball, by the way. Can you tell? This is absolutely a lovely kit. I mean, I thought it would be. Reviews were good. Um, all indications were that it was going to be a nice kit, and let me tell you, I am thoroughly enjoying this. The fit is terrific, you know, especially after coming off something like that Wingnut Wings kit and even the Spitfire that I've just made. And that was a beautiful fit. If I'd gone to a Zvezda kit like the old BT-7 and everything was dreadful, or, you know, or if I'd come across all the problems that I had in the Arizona with all the things I had to trim and cut, that would have been disappointing. But I'm not disappointed. It's, it is beautiful. And the only issues I've got is I didn't bother to read ahead and check. And also I'm going to do that with basically the construction as well as far as all these pieces go. Um, but that's okay. Normally I do that. I was just so excited. Finally, after weeks and weeks, I've been trying to get on this for weeks and people keep sending me work. Bastards keep wanting me to work, earn money. And all I do is buy more kits. <laughs> Anyhow, all right, we'll leave it there because um, that's as far as I can go in this video. When you come back, hopefully I've got the portholes drilled out, all this sorted out. I'll probably get the um, a work out of where I'm going to put the pedestals in and we'll proceed from there. How about that? This is only day one. This is all. I mean, I've been up this mm, five hours. Five hours and I've got to that point. Isn't that terrific? It's a lovely kit. All right, it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harry Houdini. <laughs>